Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Hire a Self Ensemble. I am your host, Apollonia Williams. I go by the name Apple for short. This topic is brought to you by none other than the Holy Spirit. Literally, revelatory teaching moments are shared here to help you assemble the pieces of your higher self in which the Lord thy God sees in all of us. In this revelatory teaching video, we will go through the deep meaning behind the second part of the scripture, Matthew 5 and 13, in which was a question of how can saltiness be restored? To reiterate, Matthew chapter 5 verse 13 says, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, its strength, its quality, how can its saltiness be restored? It is not good for anything but to be thrown out and trodden underfoot by men. Now the answer to the question, how can saltiness be restored when salt has lost its taste, meaning its purpose, its strength, and its quality is regeneration. Let us now look and see how can a biology term mean so much to us as members of the body of Christ. In biology, regeneration is the process of renewal, restoration, and growth of damaged or missing cells, tissues, organs, and even entire body parts to full function in plants and animals. I want to point out that although this is happening to plants and animals physically, however, this is exactly what is happening to us spiritually. You see, before we knew Christ, a lot of us were damaged. We were missing some things and we were not able to fully function in the capacity that we were destined to fully operate in. Consider Paul, for example. Paul murdered a lot of followers of Jesus until one day he lost his sight, meaning the sight of Paul's own authority to operate in destruction towards the members of the body of Christ went through regeneration. The renewal of Paul's mind and the restoration of Paul's sight allowed him to see things from the eye of the beholder, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Healing requires restoration. Healing requires growth and renewal. Restoration, growth, and renewal are all aspects of regeneration. God uses and utilizes these aspects as part of our maturity and our development in Christ. Therefore, anyone in Christ goes through a spiritual regeneration and becomes a new creation. For Titus chapter 3 verse 5 through 7 says, He saved us, not by works which we did in our own righteousness, but according to his mercy, through a washing of regeneration, a renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he richly poured out upon us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior. He did it in order for us to be declared righteous by the grace of God and may become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The Greek word for regeneration is palagonesia. Palagonesia means renovations for the production of a new life consecrated to God through a radical change of mind for the better. The purpose of renovation is to restore to a former better state by cleaning, repairing, or rebuilding. Renovation is the process of improving a broken, damaged, or outdated structure. Renovation is also known as remodeling. Remodeling by definition means to reshape differently. Remodeling is the process of undergoing structural reorganization and alterations for renewal. The scripture that comes to mind in regards to renovation and remodeling is Ezekiel chapter 36 
verses 24 to 28. And the scripture says, For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes. And ye shall keep my judgments, and do them. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. And ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. Now when I read this and saw the word countries... I heard the word mindsets, to which then I considered that the Lord is referencing countries as worldly mindsets. So I put that in to perspective and reread verse 24, in which enlightened me to see that he is gathering us out of all worldly mindsets and bringing us into our own land. Land from a spiritual perspective means mind which means the land he is bringing us to is a mindset to think and act like Christ. Doesn't this scripture describe regeneration to a T? Now, to sum up everything that I have just expressed about regeneration, regeneration is used for renewal, growth, and restoration. How God goes about your renewal, your growth, and restoration is through Christ Jesus. You and Christ are one. He resides in your heart. So because he resides in your heart, God has complete control over you. You are his vessel to be used for righteous purposes. However, there are still places within us that are hidden deep within us that are still damaged, broken, and inoperative. These hidden places within us can only be revealed and healed when brought up to the surface. And this occurs during the process of renovation, the remodeling of our heart, body, minds, and soul. I say mind with an S because we have two minds, one in our head and the other in our belly. For Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27 says, The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inner parts of the belly. Just like a house needs a new roof, furnace, stove, refrigerator, and septic system every 15 years, or maybe a new central air conditioning, dishwasher, and garbage disposal every five years. Annually, we experience regeneration of our heart body, minds, and soul to improve our heart, to improve our body, to improve our minds and soul so that we can glorify the Lord at our highest capacity. Again, I want to point out minds with an S to signify you have two minds, one in the head and one in your belly. For Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23 to 24 says, You are to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to clothe yourselves with the new self created in God's image in the way of uprightness and holiness that belong to the truth. Now going back to Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, the final part of the scripture which says, it is not good for anything but to be thrown out and trodden underfoot by men. What this is saying is that if we don't restore our saltiness and become that salt of the earth, then we are deemed not good. Therefore, we will be thrown out and trodden underfoot by men. Let's define trodden for a clear understanding. The word for trodden in Greek is katapateo, and it means to treat with rudeness, insult, or insulting neglect and contempt. 
to desecrate through devastation and outrage. Desecrate by definition means to treat shamefully or with great disrespect to damage or show no respect toward something. Now, going back to the first part of the scripture, Matthew chapter five, verse 13 says that you are the salt of the earth. And when we remain the salt of the earth, we keep ourselves and others from being trodden down. How? By becoming the light of Christ to the world as stated in Matthew chapter 5 verse 14. According to 2 Corinthians 4 and 6, when we do this, God lets the light shine in the hearts of those who are in darkness to cause the knowledge and glory of Christ to awaken in which is the way to truth and life, John 14 and 6. And whoever finds life pursues righteousness and love, Proverbs 21, 21. Amen. Hallelujah. May a tremendous blessing be poured out upon all the hearers and doers of this mighty word. Thank you so much in advance for your love and support by subscribing to my channel. Again, my name is Apollonia Williams, and I go by Apple for short. And love and light, stay in tune. God bless.